Good day guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Nate and I'm here today with a BMS 4.33 uh, quick guide or simple guide how to use LGBs, laser guided bombs. Um, I've seen a few people in the comments and sometimes on the forums that BMS can be quite daunting, the amount of uh, information and the techniques required to, to do a lot of ground support stuff and really get involved in the ground war is a bit too much. It's actually not, it's very simple. Um, if you want to know a detailed um, technique or detailed use of uh, laser guided bombs or CCRP, CCIP, Kraus uh, has, has a set of videos and they're really good. Um, I would go recommend watching them, but this is just a simple version, so do be aware that if you want any real, like, in-depth stuff, you know, there are better videos out there for this. I just want to do it because I know people out there who just want a simple version and get in the air in a couple of minutes and just drop something off. So we're going to be using the training mission here, which is the, if you go to tactical engagements and go to uh, 11 LGB, that brings you to a training mission. And if you, there's two, one of them is ram start, the other one isn't. So we're going to take the one non ram start, so I don't have to start on the ground. And it puts us almost uh, on target, uh, on the push point of the target. So this is a really good way of actually kind of just practicing your laser guided bomb techniques without having to do the whole thing every time. So what do you need to note here? Well, here you need to note the loadout that you've you've, you've got GPUs, obviously. And you make sure you've got to have the TGP because you'll need that to actually guide the bomb onto the target. Uh, which is very important because if you don't have the TGP, the bomb's not going to go anywhere. Well, it will, it will just go straight down and actually don't hit anything. Um, you need to note the code. This is important to note, but for the for beginners, I wouldn't tinker with this. The code allows you to do some cool, like, buddy lazing. Um, so one plane can have a TGP and guide the GPUs from other aircraft. At the moment, not really sure what, how that would be super important because most of the aircraft, in fact, I think all the aircraft on the... On the um, I'm going to use Allied side, NATO side, can can carry their own TGPs, so not a huge deal. And those that can't, such as the Vigan, cannot carry um, ground munitions anyways. The only the only scenario I think that could be useful is if you use Harriers, because Harriers have limited weight hard points. Um, one Harrier with a with a, a TGP can start buddy lazing for all the other Harriers, but that's that's something a bit more advanced, and I don't think that's particularly. Um, advantageous in any way. This just seems to love hard work, in my opinion. I'm happier just flying more, more Vipers. Um, so just note the code. It's worth noting what, what it is. Um, when you get more advanced, you can go think with this there. And I will have marked, what I normally do is I mark the target as a steer point. So if I recon the target, we're going to attack this dock here, this dock in particular, and steer point seven. Now I, I use this uh, steer point seven because it is actually steer point seven. So the TGP, when selecting uh, steer point seven, will automatically pan towards the target. But that will become more evident when I show you in game. Remember, this is a simple guide. It's really just allow you to get bombs off on the target. So I'm gonna put us in takeoff mode now, and we'll see you guys in the cockpit. All right, guys. So now we're in the pit. Something I forgot to mention in the previous section of the video was that. These will only work for the GPUs that are actual GPUs. Don't confu be confused with the GPU 38 and GPU uh, 32, which are actually JDAMs. Um, they're guided bomb units, so they're GPUs, but they're guided by GPS, not lasers. So worth noting there. And of course, the um, there's also the other. Um, G there's one more GPU that's TV guided, which is it, it's a huge GPU. You can't miss it. So that isn't guided by um, the laser on the TGP. That has a separate guidance system. Right. Now that I've got that big asterisk out of the way for what a GPU attack is, we can continue with the mission. So the the, tar the actual the actual um, port is just ahead of us. So I'm going to unpause and periodically pause to show you how this works. Right. So the first we need to do is actually um, make the de make the tr the laser on the targeting pod out of training mode. It's on training mode by default, which is a little bit annoying. And I would normally do it on the ground just before takeoff, but I'll do it here to show you guys how it works. So let's unpause it first. So you need to go to list here on the, and do it from the DED. Go to zero to bring up laser, L-A-S-A-R. Um, hit five, which, which is number five, so hit five. And you can see here, I'll just pause it quickly. It's on training mode, TRNG. So what I need to do is bring the, um, the selector down. You see the two little uh, asterisks there. Now move it down to air to ground, and I toggle zero. Zero toggles it from uh, training to combat. See there, now it's on combat mode. So the laser will now actually guide to, to the target. There's a few other things here you can have a look. Laser ST time, and that's the that time laser um, beams before impact. There's a few other things here, but you can see here your TGP code and your LST code. So these are two things that you can play with when you're more, more advanced, as I mentioned before. But for now, just bear in mind, use the default one. So that's that done. All right, so now I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna turn on the TGP. Hit the ground. 
and put it on uh, steer point seven. So you see here we're on steer point six. Let me have this steer point six. If I move it to steer point seven, the camera will start to pan. Now the camera will automatically pan to the target uh, or steer point seven, depending on what you've done. Um, there you go there, and it's picked up the port. You can see there the port. How does now? You can use the the FCR to move the camera around the TGP, or you can use the TGP uh, sense of interest. If you move sense of interest over the TGP, that will move around. If you move, if you use this, it uses a very. Um, if you use the FCR to move the camera, uh, oops, can't move it because I've turned off my track. Um, then it is a. It's not very sensitive. It, you cannot fine tune the TGP. Whereas if you move the the TGP, um, it's a very slow and it's uh, not very sensitive. So using the FCR to move the uh, TGP around is oversensitive, and using the TGP to move the TGP around is very uh, not very sensitive. So let me, I'll show you here when I unpause it. So I've got sense of interest, you can see, on the FCR, and a little bit, it pans a lot. Whereas if I move the sense of interest over here, it's a, a bit less. Uh, especially when, it'll be more obvious when I zoom in. So zooming is, zooming is a very counterintuitive here. It's, I know it sounds strange, but all F4 zooms in, and I think all F3 zooms out. I'm just... So all F4 zooming in. Then you see here, I, the panning is a lot more sensitive because I can move small distances. And if you move it from wide beam, I apologize for my track, it's not tracking very well, to narrow, it really zooms in a lot, right? Anyways, I don't want to be zooming in on some random guy's house. So let's go back to state point six and then state point seven. And that should, oops, I think I've overwritten it. So let's go to the port here. You can change the modes in the TGP uh, it's got a few modes. It's got white hot, black hot, and TV. So let's have on. I like to have on a white hot. You can see here. There's the port. There's the port. All right. So let's go back to the port here. It's it nose over here, and you'll now notice that there's the the, the little uh, the little square box. That's where your camera's pointing. So that's worth noting. Now, you can see the TGP is actually moving around because I haven't locked it to any position, so it's moving with the aircraft. So what I want to do is move the, the TGP to this building here, okay, and lock it. Now, you see it's IR point, so now it's locked that target up. And once you've done that, it will give you a timer, a minute 46. You can see a minute 46. That is the timer to the first, that is not the initial point for the bomb. That's not the point to release the point of initial. Then there will be another second timer for the release. This just tells you that how long you need to be to get sort of ready, and once you're in ready, then it gives you time to fine tune it. So now I can I have a minute and thirty to get actually get into a position to, to drop the bombs. It's worth noting while you're in this stage, it becomes very easy to become fixated at the TGP, not be looking outside at near threats, and not looking at the RWR. So I, I I need to stress to you guys that while you're doing this. It's um, worth looking outside from time to time, make sure you get a picture of what's going on. We need to turn on the laser arm, the master arm, and uh, that, that's really required for the lasers. Now, it, at this stage, I may play with the SMS, and I've got four GB12, so I'll just fire them off as a pair, uh, because I can. So 55 seconds to drop. So I need to get a full line dead center of the aircraft, preferably. That building is fairly large. I'm going to zoom out and make it wide. All right. Things are okay. Things are looking good. No flak, no, no A whatsoever. RWR is clear. Yeah, so all F4 zoom in, all F3 zoom out. I know it sounds weird. It won't, all hitting all F4 won't close your game. Um, it will, it will just keep it going. Yeah, you can fine tune where your bomb's going to drop here, just toggling whatever key you've set to the your um, cursor uh, key, slew key. So you see 10 seconds now, and now you get a bar. When that bar hits the hits the, the middle, that will give you a big circle, and that means you're about to drop. So big circle. The timer will go again. It will set 13. So we've now got 13 seconds drop. This is all done by calculated by the onboard uh, the computer. Um, I have very little say in this. Okay, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bomb's gone. So I dropped off a pair of paveways because I said I put my SMS page two bombs. So now what we do is you can you can fly backwards. You can move. I'd be very careful because you the TG you might mask your TGP if you're not careful. 
but you can now maneuver as required. So no, at this stage I'd be chopping Chaffler and just turning around, keep an eye out. Let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, you got so on the uh, HUD, you got the timer at the bottom right now, and on, you can down the TGP. You can see uh, 16 seconds to drop. So what I normally do is I fly towards the target, drop in orbit towards my my friendly side, and I go back home. So it's easy to do. So three, two, one, impact. There you go. That's actually it. That's that's very little, very little um, pre-planning, very little to to actually do the setup. Uh, all you gotta do is make sure your laser arms on and your laser on training mode, and just find something. I'll give you guys another another little fun thing to to do to to find targets easily. If you put your FCR on t on on your screen, and uh, let me just unlock the target first, so I don't need to. I bring my FCR over here. If you make this G GM is ground mo at ground uh, targets, but if you have GMT, it picks up ground moving targets. That allows you to to have moving targets come up. As, uh, as 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 lit up, which makes finding columns of tanks and and moving APCs very very simple. So I use that normally to find if I'm on a, a cl closed air support mission. If I'm just on like a search and destroy, I normally just have my um, left FCR on GMT ground moving targets. Um, whereas GM is just all targets from the ground. So I I, I prefer having GMT and then look for tank columns or whatever. And, and and try and find that way. Um, today <laughs> there's nothing moving, I think, because it's friendly territory and there's no there's no moving targets. Um, but that's actually it. It's it's really simple. So if you guys have any more questions uh, or anything you'd like to know, put them in the comment below. Like I said, this is a very simplistic and over, uh, very oversimplified way of um, doing ground attack missions in, in B BMS. But it's really, as you saw, it's not hard. So just do a quick recap. Before you do, you do a laser attack, you turn on your list, you bring up. Uh, you hit the second page, you go to laser, you make sure you put that from uh, training to combat, make sure your laser's on, your master arm's on, and then you, you then look for the target using your either your FCR to look for a target that way, or if it's pre-planned, um, bring it to the steer point to the correct steer point, and the TGB should do the rest. Um, I do apologize if my tracking is annoying. It I have free track, so it's a it's a free face tracking program it uses a webcam. It's not particularly accurate. I don't have the <laughs> the advanced uh, IR tr uh, tracker IR programs. All right, guys. Well, that's actually it. I can't see anything here to to show you guys the bomb. So I'm gonna call the video here, and I'm gonna go play some BMS on my own. All right, guys. Well, till next time. This is Nate out. And if you have any questions or anything, just put in the comments here, and I'll try to give you. Uh, I normally try and give you a personal video. Like I'll make a video for you, and I'll just make it unlisted, and you guys can have a look for stuff like that. If you have anything that I can help you with, so um, just put it below. All right, guys. Well, I'm off.